Please welcome back to our show, Megan Good. Because you've, because you've got, because you've got such a beautiful face and a great body. Thank you. You have the kind of structure you can rock any hair. I remember last time that you were here, you had a short, short like, and then a swoop de doop in the front. Yeah. This right here is beautiful as well. Thank you. And a side shave. Yeah, both sides. Both side shave. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. How daring. Listen, I, you know, Dr. Carey, who came up with this style, me and her, I wanted to do something that was like homage to Lisa Bonet, because I think her dreads are so beautiful. They are. And Dr. Carey, my, my stylist, Maisha Oliver, sent me to her, and she was like, ooh, I don't know how to do that. That hasn't been done. She was like, let me pray on it. And she came back a week later. She was like, God gave me a vision for how to do it. This is how we're going to do it. Pray on and, it. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's only hair, Megan. I know, but I wanted something very specific, and, and no one had really done it yet. And you so, know what? Now that you mentioned Lisa Bona, you, are, do you know her? Are you uh, friends with her? I do. Her? We did um, Biker Boys together. I could see you being friends with her. Yeah. yeah. She's beautiful. Beautiful and, yeah. and earthy. Yeah. So, um, we've had eyebrow talk before. Yes, we have. Uh, I recently started caring about my own eyebrows, mm -hmm. and I didn't get them tattooed. I get microblading, which is a temporary thing. Yes. But I get them in, I get them in dark, so I'm, yes, I'm doing eyebrow play. They, yes! Okay. <laughs> For the first time in my life, and I love it. It's so easy, right? Because, like, you wake up like this. What, oh, Megan? It's the best. It's the best. I've been a fool all of my <laughs> life, and now I'm just like, every time I wake up, it's like, oh, it's great. But your, your eyebrows are tattooed permanently. Yes, they were tattooed permanently, but then after like six, seven years, they started to lighten up, so then I started doing microblading. Oh, which, you do that now too? Yeah, well, I wish I had done that first. If I had done that first, then that they would have more better lines, but you know. Well, you know what they say about when you get them permanently done? Your face changes shapes, so if you're lucky to live until you're like 100 years old, then right. you're gonna have these, you know, 25-year-old <laughs> eyebrows <laughs> on your droopy face. But, no, beautiful. Thank you. All right. Now, how's Devon? He's good. He's good. Great. Is he yeah. here with you? Is no, he... he's home. He's back in LA. Yeah. So Megan and Devon are married. They've been married now for Almost five years. Almost five years. Yeah. <laughs> this is them at um, a gold. Is this at the Golden Globe party? Um, this is at the Golden Globes in style after party. You look good, Megan. Thank you. <laughs> and, and I've never had a problem with the with the modern way that women who are married to men of the cloth dress. I, I don't have a problem with it, but a lot of your constituency does. Yeah. Devon is a man of the cloth, yes. and Megan is a woman of the streets. <laughs> well, I say, I say I'm, I'm, I'm both, you know? Yeah, but you yeah. know what, but you own that. Megan is from LA, and look, she's been acting since she's four years old, so yeah. you've been a showgirl since forever. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, a big part of it, is like, you know, people are like, well, you need to dress appropriate. I'm like, well, I grew up in the business doing, you know, shows off Broadway with drag queens. This is appropriate to me, Yeah, and, you know, and Devon likes experience. it. He's from Oakland, yeah. what's your business? Yeah. Well, so. well, let me show you how she presented um, a, a, a church award. Um, mm. <laughs> okay. I'm done with you. Hold, hold. I mean. Let me clarify. Megan. Wait, wait, wait. Megan, wait, 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 Megan, wait. Megan, look, you didn't even wear nipple covers. I didn't even know I was presenting a church award. Well, did you fire somebody for not telling you that? Uh, it was them, it was them last minute. They if just changed it and I, and I still, I, I'm not gonna lie, I still didn't even think anything. Cause but, I didn't feel that I was inappropriate. But obviously I learned really quick that people had a problem with that. Um, well, if, but, you, if you knew that you were presenting a church award, yeah. a gospel award, would you have still worn the dress anyway? Um, I would have worn a different dress, but it still would have been sexy. I love you. I love you. <laughs> well, when you run into um, um, godly people in the streets, mm -hmm. do they ever say anything to you? You know, or most... hit you with their purse? <laughs> no, and they better not. I mean, I'm gonna pray for them, but um, but uh, no, you know, it's people in the streets are like. Usually, a lot of women come up to me. They're like, "Thank you," because I wouldn't go into church because people say I don't look the role or people say I don't fit in or people say that, you yeah. know, whatever it is. And so I appeal to people who 
are, you know, people who've been bullied and people who have been told they're not good enough for God when it's like, you're not God. Let God be God. Period, point blank. You know? Well, I can tell you who you do appeal to. You appeal to men everywhere. I mean, our son is 16. Megan, you're 35. Our yeah. son told us before getting on the bus this morning, ask Megan, what's good? <laughs> but, but all the boys love you, men, boys. Is it, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? You still got it, Ian. Uh, uh, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Give it again. <laughs> it's wonderful being a sex symbol. Your husband doesn't have a problem with it, does he? No, and I think, you know, I don't want to just be one thing, you know? I want to be everything. I want to be a superhero. I want to be sexy. I want to be strong. I want to be spiritual. I want to I want to be everything that I'm called to be, and it's, and it's a lot of different things. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. All right, and this is very, very important. I need to know. Um, so you and Devon didn't have sex until you got married. Right. But prior to meeting Devon, you were celibate for quite some time. Yeah. And how long were you celibate before you met Devon? Only a few months. And he was, well, <laughs> let me put it this way. Before we had sex, we were celibate for over a year together. Okay. Now, he was celibate for 10 years. And he was celibate because he was preaching. So he felt like, I can't get up in the pulpit and preach about the word of God and I'm not living it. You know? And for me, it was a, um, for me, it was always a, a conflict, something I felt bad about in my spirit because I didn't grow up in the church, but I grew up, you know, reading my Bible. I got saved when I was 12. I got baptized when I was 19 on my own. So I always had a conviction about it, but I always felt, well, this is the one area that God understands. And then you get to a point point, you're like, no, man, you're either gonna do it all or you're not. And I just had to make a decision to do something different. So how long were you and Devon dating? Like, what was yeah. the time from meeting to the time of actually doing the dirty? Uh, <laughs> it was about a year and a month. A year and a month? Yeah. Well, and what about if you were disappointed? Because this is my thing. <laughs> now, now, Megan, here's the deal. If you all watch our show on a regular basis, you know there was a woman on the show the other day during Ask Wendy, 35 years old, yeah. had sex for the first time in her life yeah. with one guy, and she was asking me, you know, about like sex tips and stuff. I told right. her you can find all that stuff on the internet, you know, but, right. but here's the thing. So you wait all this time, Megan, yeah. you and also that young lady. Yeah. But for you, you're trapped because you're married. So what if, what if you're disappointed? I, well, you know, it's I, funny because a lot of people ask me that. They're like, well, what if, you know, you shouldn't whatever without milking the cow or whatever without driving the car? And I'm like, one, he's not a car. Um, he's a person. And two, when you really love someone and you create a space where you guys know each other mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and the connection is so deep yes. and so different than anything you've ever experienced before, when you make love, it's the same thing as when you're in any other relationship. You guys teach each other what you like. You teach each other what you're into. You guys make love, and it's, and it's awesome because so you guys have that relationship. And you're five years in now, so yeah. it's all good. Um, yes. yes, it is good. Yes, good for you. Thank you. All right, so now Megan has a new Lifetime movie. Yeah. Tell us about it. Man, it's um, called Love by the Tenth Date. And for me, it was really exciting because it was a character that I haven't played before. And a lot of people have seen the trailer and they're like, well, I feel like you played this character and think like a man. And I'm like, no, this character is so quirky. She's so offbeat. She's a little bit delusional. She might be kind of crazy, um, <laughs> but she's just like fun, you know? And she's like every girl's girl where she just wants love. What's the you know? plot line? The plot line is that she and four of her friends go on this journey together and she has to wait and go on a date with someone, the same person, 10 times before she can know in her mind that person knows that they're in a relationship, in essence. Because she feels that she's fallen in love and she's never gotten to 10 dates. That, you know what, that's a fair assessment even right. in real life. Right. 10 dates, that's good. Yeah. It's called Love by the 10th Date. It premieres on Lifetime, January 28th at eight o'clock. 